Hi everyone, I'm Humbly Anna Anders. This is the second video here today. And what I was talking about was the events of 9-11 and how the BBC journalist, it was a female journalist, and I'll pull that up when I post my Facebook uh, postings here. But anyways, on 9-11-01, uh, there was a, a BBC female journalist who was reporting live that um, WTC7 was going to get ready to it was gonna fall, it fell, fell down actually. She said it actually fell down and it was standing directly behind her. So that was the smoking gun of 9-11 and no planes ever hit WTC-7. So if you're an American citizen, inside or outside this country, it doesn't matter. You should research and find out for yourself the facts of 9-11 because at 5.20 p.m. WTC-7 went down all by itself. It was a little bit different uh, how do I say this, controlled demolition other than uh, the North and South Towers. See, the North and South Towers, those were explosions. And the debris field for the North and South Towers were equal in circumference. And the only way you can get that is through de controlled demolition. Um, so that's the North and South Towers. WTC-7 was an implosion, not an explosion. Implosion means it folds in on its own footprint. Um, and so there you have it. And so that's what happened with WTC-7. It went down in less than seven seconds. So, uh, and the North and South Towers went down within less than 12 seconds each one. So, and that's free, free fall speed. So when you do your homework uh, in physics, then you learn the law of free fall speed. So I like Stephen Jones. You can Google him, YouTube him. There's lots, um, there's lots of good guys that have done their uh, homework, and they know because they work in the, they work in the field of uh, building buildings and stuff. Richard Gage, Richard Gage, um, AE911Truth.org, uh, engineers. Uh, it's a group of engineers that expose the truth about 9/11. So, and I actually met Richard Gage in Phoenix, Arizona. He had a talk down there, a public talk, and people came in to listen to him speak, and it was a pleasure to meet him. So, um, so slowly over, uh, over the years here, decade, um, you know, the information about 9-11 has been coming forward. Um, unfortunately, there's a media blackout about it, and, uh, but most New Yorkers, uh, and I'm talking about original New Yorkers, not newly planted New Yorkers. Most original New Yorkers know that 9-11 was an inside job. And, uh, it, you know, you just cannot deny it. You cannot deny that the evidence was shipped off to China immediately, you know, um, and the towers were tore down. So that, to me, has uh, fingerprints all over it of uh, some uh, corrupt people that like to to bulldoze things, see, and we have a family story here in corrupt Cleveland as well, and uh, interesting enough, they bulldozed that home too, and they tore it down, so, and that's exactly the, uh, th that's exactly what Israel likes to do to Palestine even, they bulldozed all the homes there in Palestine, and uh, they're building new, which is Israel, and, and there is a project, it's called the Greater Israel Project. And what I was trying to say before is the globalist 1% parasitical elite, and we're t yes, we're talking about the corrupt Queen of England, we're talking about the corrupt Pope, we're talking about uh, the, the England financial district, we're talking about corrupt Wall Street, we're talking about corrupt Washington, D.C., all of them together, uh, and PNAC, Project for New American Century, you can Google and YouTube that term, PNAC, project for new American century you know um, they knew that they were going to do 9-11 so and the World Trade Center complex uh, was originally built by David Rockefeller and David Rockefeller when he built the World Trade Center complex complex he was in hopes that the world that the world trading corporations would come and take up residency in those two towers and that never manifested so and so the towers were actually more of a burden than they were anything but David Rockefeller was too cheap to uh, have the asbestos removed from it. So instead what they did was uh, David Rockefeller and the goons of uh, Wall Street um, hired a man, his name is Lucky Larry, nickname, okay, Lucky Larry Silverstein. Um, he took out a 99.9 .9 year lease on July 24, 2001. 
And when he took out that lease on the World Trade Center complex, within the body of that lease was a terrorist insurance coverage for the first time ever. So this was July 24, 2001, and then 9-11 happened on 9-11-01. And for the first time in the World Trade Center complex in history, the World Trade Center complex was covered with terrorist insurance coverage. So they got to claim a uh, terrorist hit on that. Um, within a matter of months. So that's that's the truth about 9-11. Um, and that's the sad truth for us because we bought into it emotionally, um, politically, and uh, what I was trying to say about corrupt politics in our world today is um, our politics is very sick from local to global and it's been infested um, and it's sick. And so what I want to say is that, you know, how do you take politics to a hospital? You can't. You cannot take it to a hospital. So what we the people, we the humans of this beautiful planet, are responsible and accountable. And we need to uh, help to improve our politics. We need to keep exposing the corruptness of our politics. We need to keep all eyes on it, all eyes on it repeatedly, 24-7, 365. And don't think that this government has it locally, county, state, or national levels. Don't think that they have it, people, because they don't. Okay, all, you know, all eyes have been on us ever since 9-11-01. Uh, if you look anywhere that you go, there's cameras on you everywhere. So this government is uh, doing what they need to do and want to do so corruptly. But are we putting cameras on our politicians and holding them accountable and responsible? Are we holding corporations accountable and responsible? You know, this nation used to be a great nation to the point where if you had a job, if you had a job 40 hours a week, you had health insurance and you had some benefits and some retirement uh, packages to look forward to. Today, this nation does not offer that to no one. Okay, They're, it's very shady. And yes, maybe the CEO gets those benefits, but not the workers among workers. So, and that's my concern, um, and the struggle is so real. It's not just so real for Anna Anders, the humble peace activist who's broke as fuck, who doesn't have health insurance. You know, um, I know the struggle's real for everyone. Everyone everywhere, and especially Venezuela, too. I just learned in Venezuela. People have to get a number there to go shopping in Venezuela, people. And when they get their number to go shopping, that doesn't guarantee that they're allowed to go shopping, because if the food's not there, they don't get the food. And I learned that they're making $30 a month, $30 a month, people. And so Venezuela today is inspiring this humble lady here to keep motivated for the cause of peace and justice and exposing corruption and disruption of human life and human values. And you can best believe that these rich mofos, corrupt 1% parasitical elite, they will fund and play all sides of the game continuously just to stay in global octopus octopus I use an octopus because that's exactly what's happening they're sucking up all the all the natural resources everywhere I'm talking about the George Soros of the world I'm talking about the Larry Silversteins the Rockefellers the Rothschilds specifically the Rothschilds do your homework people so this is what it is our food chain our air, food chain drink chain air water it's all been contaminated but we need to be mindful and uh, do what we can do to take care of ourselves on a daily basis to keep fit and healthy um, for our loved ones. And so like I said, never forget where you came from. Remember your sacred family roots, your fa sacred family trees, and never forget or abandon your cultural heritage for anyone everywhere. And don't allow them to bleach out the facts of your um, sacred cultural rights and roots. That's what I want to say to you today. No matter what the geopolitics bulldozes or uproots or, or, or yeah, uproots and rebuilds over it. And yes, I'm talking about the Greater Israel Project. And I have more to say today. Um, I also want to say some of these stories on the Facebook pages, news feeds, you got, got to be careful that they show these activists because they pay activists to be activists too and then they show all these tragic stories. You're not there and if you didn't see the person get shot, you don't know that they're not staging this crap and I don't care if it's live or not. Just because it's live doesn't mean it's real, really happening if you didn't see it. You know, especially if you weren't physically there. So you have to be very careful to sift and sort through what is really true and what is really uh, indoctrination. Okay, because Hollywood can come up with some real dynamic schemes and they're doing it and they're pulling it too. But the real beauty of uh, no matter what Hollywood does, there's real activists out here that are exposing the truth sooner or later. And you can Google and research your news, 
through alternative media and that's what I support most genuinely and I don't have anything for Fox News. I'll watch Fox News just to see the lies that they spew out historically, the warmongering projections like Holly Weird. I'm Humbly Anna Anders on this YouTube channel. This is my second video. I'm shutting it down. Thank you so much. Have a peaceful day, everyone. Don't forget your fa sacred family trees and your cultural heritage. Bye-bye.